What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back here again with another video. So we're gonna check out the rise of Roman Reigns from 2010 to 2021. This video was requested by one of the subscribers, King Tiandre. You wanted me to shout you out, so here you go, man. Appreciate you for sending this video to me. Um, you guys wanted me to check this out last night on stream. I asked you guys if you would be interested in me reacting to this, and all I saw in the chat was a whole bunch of yes. Like it was damn near the yes movement was revived in my chat last night. So we're gonna check this video out because you guys wanted it and King Tiandre wanted it as well. So thank you guys so much for all the video requests that you guys send me. Keep sending them to me. I'll try to get to them as soon as possible. And let's get into Roman Reigns before he went rogue, man. His, his journey to where he is now as the tribal chief in WWE. Let's do this. The Anoa'i family is one of the most storied families in wrestling history. From the Wild Samoans to Yokozuna and The Rock, mm -hmm. the family has seen their fair share of top stars in the wrestling business. So on May 25th, 1985, when Leati Joe Anoa'i was born, you had to think that wrestling was the path that he would go down. But his interests were elsewhere. Yep. Anoa'i took on football as his key interest. His skills in football were so strong, he was available in the 2007 NFL Draft, but he went undrafted. He'd later be picked up by the Minnesota Vikings and Jacksonville Jaguars before he'd make his way up north to the CFL. After a stint with the Edmonton Eskimos, it just wasn't sitting right for him. He then chose to move into the family business and become a professional wrestler. That's crazy. By 2010, with his family ties with The Rock and Rikishi, it helped him get signed to a developmental deal with Florida. Wow, Wrestling. look at him, man. <laughs> a young Roman Reigns. That's crazy. Just seeing him play football and then his start. Man, that's, he don't even look the same. That's crazy. He's renamed Roman Leaki. He made his FCW debut on August 19th, 2010. Leaki would remain in FCW, going on to win tag team titles with Tyler Breeze and even wow. facing off against Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose, his future Shield brothers. Wow. When WWE decided that NXT would be the new developmental brand, the FCW roster was merged into that new brand. In August of 2012, Leaki was repackaged into Roman Reigns. He was a dominant and physically imposing character who possessed a powerhouse aura to him. It appeared as though Reigns would have a long NXT run, especially as they had transitioned to developmental, so having a powerhouse like Reigns was the perfect combination. His run in NXT though wouldn't last very long. Alongside longtime indie stars Seth Rollins and mm -hmm. Dean Ambrose, the group would go on to form The Shield. The premise of The Shield- One of the best factions in WWE. Don't at me. Easily one of the best factions. I'm, I mean, when you heard their theme music, you knew business was about to pick up. Seeing them come through the crowd with the the, the tactical vest on, man, you knew somebody was about to get their ass whooped, bro. I, man, Shield was one of the greatest things WWE ever created. One it of them, at least. three anti-establishment figures. They simply said they were here to bring justice where it was needed. That all began on November 18th, 2012, in a triple threat match between mm -hmm. John Cena, Ryback, and CM Punk. The group made their debut, putting WWE on notice. In the weeks that followed, The Shield would become an untouchable force, laying out anyone in their path. Originally, the thought was the group was working for CM Punk, but that was quickly left behind. The Shield quickly took on a life of their own, mm -hmm. these three being presented as a dominant force and they lost very rarely in their initial two year run. Facts. The trio would normally compete in six man tag team matches. They were booked strong. They rarely lost. That's what made the faction so dominant. They rarely lost. And when you have something like that, where you're building up new stars and you're building up a faction to be dominant as they were, it works. It it works, man. This this era right here, this was this was this time period where they were like really trying to make a name for themselves. You also had the Yes movement going on around this time. We had CM Punk doing his thing. Raw was the show, man. Raw was the show to definitely watch. Not like it is now, but back then, definitely was the show to watch because you at least had something 
multiple things to look forward to instead of just like one or two programs or two you know storylines where Rollins and Ambrose could carry a bulk of the load, given Reigns' inexperience in the ring. Mm -hmm. Reigns was the silent assassin that fans fell in love with. Vince yep. McMahon at this time also fell in love with him. The group's dominance would see them go six months undefeated. Heading into the 2013 Extreme Rules pay-per-view, Reigns won his first title. The pair of himself and Seth Rollins beat Team Hell No for the Tag mm, Team Championships. Yep. Elsewhere on the card... Dean Ambrose had already taken the United States Championship from Kofi Kingston. Mm -hmm. The group was on a dominant run, and WWE was giving the fans a fresh new dominant group, which they hadn't seen in a very long time. On the October 14th, 2013 episode of Raw, Reigns and Rollins would lose their tag team titles. But at this time, they'd become heavies for the authority, only catapulting... Oh, yeah, man. The feud they had with... Uh uh the Rhodes brothers if you guys remember that pay-per-view where uh i believe their father had came out to to assist assist in them it was cody Rhodes, dustin Rhodes versus the shield bro it was oh man it was so good that was such a fantastic match just to see their dad come out there too was awesome bro the crowd was loving it they the shield put on a fantastic match i definitely remember that match it's on the card it was around this time where WWE started to give us hints of a breakup. It became even more likely when Reigns eliminated Rollins and Ambrose in the 2014 Royal Rumble. That was the match where Reigns had a dominant performance as he eliminated 12 performers and even made it into the final two, but he was ultimately thrown out by the winner, that being Batista. Mm -hmm. It was crazy how much the crowd wanted Reigns to win here, especially seeing how- Yep, this was, this was right before WrestleMania 30, man. The crowd didn't want any, they didn't want Batista, but at this point, Roman was, you know, he was liked by association and people liked, liked him within the shield. You know, he didn't, he wasn't cutting cringy promos. He didn't really say too much. He was the enforcer, but people were starting to get behind him in the shield or whatnot. So when it was up to Batista and Roman Reigns to go to, to main event WrestleMania, people wanted Roman Reigns legitimately at this point. Because no one wanted Batista to win. Or there's a small percentage of people that wanted Batista to main event WrestleMania uh, for WrestleMania 30. Now the dynamic would shift a few years later. After WrestleMania 30, The Shield turned their back on the authority and instead soaked in the growing adulation of the fans, mm -hmm. turning babyface for the first time in their careers. Yep. Reigns, Ambrose, and Rollins would go on to feud with the recently reformed Evolution. Yes. These six men would give us some amazing, amazing match matches. Amazing matches. And extreme rules. The Shield took home both wins and even won 3 0 in an elimination match. So that looked amazing for the group. Showing yep. that they were in good graces with the powers that be and that they had all the trust behind them. After that 3 0 win against Evolution, the next night is. Yeah, they never lost to Evolution, bro. That's. That, that's when you knew they were booking them so strong. And when Seth Rollins turned on them, that was one of the biggest swerves people did not see because they just beat Evolution multiple times. Evolution couldn't get a couldn't get a, a win off of these guys. They were the they were one of the most over factions. Well, actually, one of the only factions in WWE outside of Evolution, but they were so, people were behind them. You know what I'm saying? Outside of Daniel Bryan, people were behind the shield. And when Seth Rollins turned on them, oh my God, it was so good. That was, oh man, that was a good Where swerve. Where it all came to an end. Seth Rollins took a steel chair to ring mm -hmm. his back and ended the run for the group. Rollins would align himself with the authority and feud with Ambrose for the majority of the year. Reigns was still good with Ambrose, but Reigns would go a different direction. His first feud away from the Shield was against Randy Orton, with Reigns taking the win over the Viper at the 2014 SummerSlam. From here, it became glaringly obvious that WWE was fast-tracking Roman Reigns to become the next megastar. Yep. It's around the latter months of 2014 where fan opinion started to change on him. I had mentioned how he was the silent assassin in the Shield, and the fans liked that, but here he was being presented as a main event level star, and he wasn't ready for it. If mm -mm. this had happened slowly like his S.H.I.E.L.D. counterparts, it would have helped him here. Things became very messy, very quick, Ooh. and that mess began at the 2015 Royal Rumble. Yep, bro, it, it got cringe. When he had to deliver promos by himself, he was trying to be funny. 
ah, oh, he was trying to be a little edgy. It didn't work. And it, it, it just didn't work. The Roman Reigns we have now, the tribal chief, he does say things, but he doesn't really try to be funny. He's, you know, he's for the most part strictly business. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't really take anyone seriously. So he, he's he's like he's found his lane. Not trying to be this, you know, funny character, but serious at the time, same time. No, what worked for him in the shield is he was a serious character that was just there to whoop whoop everybody's ass. He had a little bit of fun here and there, but most of the time he's just there to whoop ass. And that's how he is now as the tribal chief. It was clear that Reigns was being groomed to win the match and challenging Brock Lesnar for the WWE title at WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. What made it even worse was fan favorite Daniel Bryan had returned to WWE yep. and a large portion of the audience wanted this to be Bryan's win. When Reigns took the spotlight instead, a chorus of boos Ooh. rained down in Philadelphia to the point where not even The Rock could help get Reigns over. Yep, sort of The Rock couldn't get him over. I don't even think Stone Cold would have been able to get him over. Everyone wanted Daniel Bryan. Simple as that. People just wanted Daniel Bryan. That was it. It it was... Roman didn't stand a chance. <laughs> if it wasn't Daniel Bryan winning that, no one really was caring. And especially since Roman won, no one really gave a F. It was, yeah. Just bad timing for Roman. The rejection of a baby face was unseen. And with social media, even those who liked Reigns started to boo him because it was the cool thing to do. Mm -hmm. Heading into WrestleMania, things got more and more worse for Reigns. Yeah. He was made to look like a dork in front of WWE audiences. This came from his delivery on promos and W. And I'm so glad. I know I keep pausing it because I got to give my own little two cents to the vid. I'm so glad they got rid of the contacts, bro. That that was just so I get it. They was trying to appeal, you know, you know, and, and you know, enhance his, you know, physical appearance with the blue eyes and all, bro. Just let him be what he is. Like how he is now. The women are still gonna love him regardless of the blue eyes. I just thought that was so cringe. WWE trying to make him a John Cena clone. Yep. I mean, you feed suffering Suckatash son to anyone, and they're gonna get canceled very quick. When WrestleMania 31 hit, WWE knew that there would be a major backlash from fans if Reigns were to win here. Mm -hmm. Here, WWE made a smart move yep. to have Seth Rollins cash in his money in the bank and end WrestleMania 31 with an unexpected moment. From here, fan sentiment towards Reigns just got worse. Yep. For the rest of 2015, the powers that be had to strip him away from the main event scene and have him in secondary feuds. But before the year would come to an end, WWE decided to stick with their gut and crown Reigns the new WWE Champion at Survivor Series 2015. Fearing backlash again, they had a Money in the Bank cash in to draw sympathy towards a character which wasn't getting the loves from the fans that they yeah. expected. 2015 ended with Vince McMahon coming back as an on-screen character to help get Reigns over. It kind of worked. I mean, when Reigns beat Sheamus for his second WWE title, the fans gave him a decent cheer. Mm -hmm. Not sure if this was because they wanted Roman to win or they just didn't want Sheamus as the WWE champion. Could have been now, the latter. Now, in the second run with the WWE championship, the McMahon family would try to stack the deck further against Reigns by making him defend his title in the Royal Rumble match and starting that match at number one. Reigns would survive near the end stages of the match, but Triple H would be the one to dethrone Reigns. The plan heading into WrestleMania 32 was to stack the deck against Roman yep. even further and have him take on the King of Kings. They were relentless with this push, Ooh. even when they saw WWE fans reject. Yeah, this push, it. this is the WrestleMania. I did not care for the main event. I didn't give two Fs, bro. I just didn't care. Because they were forcing it. No one wanted him as the top guy. At least not as a face. And they kept shoving him down our throats over and over and over. No. No matter how many times you stack the get deck against Roman Reigns. At that point, us fans, majority of us fans, we didn't care. It, it didn't matter what you did. We did not care. Reigns, they just kept pushing on with it because they were so determined to get him over. This only pissed off WWE fans even more because they were so persistent by telling us, this is the guy, yep. so cheer for him. At WrestleMania 32, 
Fans were not up for a Triple H and Roman Reigns. No. Match. When Reigns won his third WWE title in less than a year, fans wanted every other guy who came in contact with Reigns to beat him. Mm -hmm. He did have some solid matches with AJ Styles, and thankfully for the majority who wanted Reigns to lose the WWE title, Seth Rollins returned from a knee injury. Yep. When Rollins made his return, he was cheered because the person he was beating up was, was Roman, Roman Reigns. So WWE fans took Seth's side. But WWE continued to present Reigns as a face, even though it looked like the time had come to turn him. Reigns lost the WWE title at Money in the Bank 2016. He may have also lost some trust backstage as he was suspended for violating the wellness policy at this time. It was summer 16 and WWE decided to do another brand split. Reigns was taken by Raw in the draft, but he wouldn't be immediately propelled into the main event scene. After Vince McMahon saw his plan with Reigns wasn't working and the mm -hmm. possibility of the wellness violation, Reigns was kept away from the main event scene. He would instead spend the remainder of the year in the mid card feuding for the United States title as WWE wanted to cool his momentum before they tried again. This try would come in the form of a huge match against The Undertaker. Reigns yep. eliminated Undertaker in the 2017 Royal Rumble, which led to Taker and Reigns main eventing WrestleMania and fighting over yards and dogs. <laughs> and I don't even know what else. Clearly, WWE wanted to keep Reigns in top feuds, even if that meant him not winning titles, but this didn't do anyone any favors. The match was slow, and what didn't help was the aging Taker yeah. just couldn't keep up with Reigns. Reigns became only the second man ever to beat the Phenom at the Showcase of the Immortals, and he had seemingly retired him too. Yes. The next night when he came out to- This was the moment he should have went heel. This was the prime maximum moment where he should have went nuclear heel mode. That crowd- the night after WrestleMania, the night after he, at that time, we all thought he retired The Undertaker for good. Ultimately, he didn't. But at that time, we all thought he was retired. Roman Reigns retired The Undertaker. Roman Reigns is claiming this is his yard now. All he had to do was turn on the fans, embellish the hate, go rogue at that moment. If he would have went rogue at that moment, I'm telling you now, he would be in a much better situation. I mean, granted, he's doing good now. Granted, they turned him heel, so he's he's killing it right now. But imagine if we had the Roman Reigns now, back then. Oh, my God. Oh, my. The feuds would have been better, enhanced, because now you have a heel character. People would have legitimately been booing him because he beat The Undertaker. People would have never forgave him for that, especially if he reminded them all the time. I beat The Undertaker. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Oh, they missed a prime opportunity to turn him heel. Proclaimed WWE as his yard. This guy was met with some attitude era level heat. Yes. The company had just made the guy who they wanted to push as the new head of the industry into an even more hated character. Yeah. Reigns remained in the main event scene through 2017, but would lose time and time again. WWE even put on a WrestleMania worthy program between John Cena and Roman Reigns heading into No Mercy 2017. In a promo beforehand, Cena bashed into Reigns and he basically addressed all the frustration fans had against him. Cena said Reigns was a bootleg copy of- Cena embarrassed him legitimately on the mic. He destroyed him on the mic. And it's come full circle because, you know, we got John Cena going against Roman Reigns at SummerSlam. And... Roman has held his own much better than he did this time. Like, he, he's, held, he's held his own promo-wise against John Cena a lot better this time. So, it is good to see his growth. It's good to see that his promo skill, he's more comfortable in delivering, in delivering the lines and what he has to say. I like it. It comes off more organic. Because this promo segment, oh, man. He got obliterated by John Cena. He didn't even remember his lines. It was awful. Of John Cena. He said Reigns was the reason Cena had to come back time and time again. And in the ultimate mic drop, he said that Reigns should be ashamed Cena's a part-timer because he could do this part-time better than Reigns could ever do it full-time.
Reigns beat Cena at no mercy in what looked like a passing of the torch moment, but WWE fans, they saw right through They saw right through it. WWE fans just couldn't warm up to the guy. The only option left was a Shield reunion, and that's the route they took. Mm -hmm. After a brief stint with Rollins and Ambrose, WWE went back to pushing Reigns as a singles competitor towards WrestleMania 34. Reigns would face Lesnar for the Universal Championship in the main event of the show, but he would shockingly go on to lose. Yep. He did get his revenge at SummerSlam of that year, winning the Universal title for the first time. Shortly thereafter, it was a very emotional situation. Reigns came out to address the WWE Universe, telling them that he was re-diagnosed with leukemia. Mm -hmm. He vacated the Universal title and said his future looked up in the air. The moment put professional wrestling in the back and focused on the human aspect of Roman as he told everyone his real name was Joe. Yeah. He said one day he would be back to reclaim what was his, but he didn't know when. This hint of real life made Reigns a little bit more loved. You could Yeah, this right here when he said this, I remember watching this and I was like, yo, we're getting a, a glimpse of Joe, the actual guy. Not the wrestler, not the character, the guy. And at this point, it was one of those things where you had to separate the two. And people instantly started to understand, okay, this ain't this is not a storyline. This is not something that they're, you know, is scripted. This is coming from the heart. He seriously seriously has, you know, you know, cancer and he's trying to fight it. And this is the turning point of Roman Reigns, honestly, because at the end of the day, he was still regardlessly going to get booed until they turned him heel. But him dealing with this, you know, and him trying to, you know, overcome it and have to relinquish the title and people giving genuine emotions in the back. And you see the shield, you know, Dean Ambrose at the time and Seth Rollins come out there to show him love. You see real tears. It was a heartfelt moment because people had to separate the character from the actual wrestler. I mean, the character from the actual person. So, Say it was in pity, but he had taken one of the most despised characters and have him win over a majority of the fans with his real life story. It was uncertain how long he'd be gone for, but he returned very quickly. In February of 2019, Reigns came back to announce that he was in remission. Mm -hmm. This was followed with a final Shield reunion before Dean Ambrose left the company, and now it looked like the guy who they had tried so hard to make their top star would remain a babyface for years to come. Yeah. Even though reactions to Reigns were lukewarm at best. Yeah. After a return win at WrestleMania 35 against Drew McIntyre, Roman Reigns was moved to SmackDown, and after a very boring feud against Shane McMahon, fans started to turn their backs on the big dog once again. Mm -hmm. Fighting with Baron Corbin over if Reigns was an actual dog didn't really help much either. Yeah. Thankfully, Reigns and Corbin went their separate ways, and it was time for WrestleMania 36. It was around this time that the world decided it wasn't going to cooperate, and a global pandemic broke out. As a result, Reigns removed himself from WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. The plan heading into the show was to have Reigns take on Goldberg for the Universal Championship. As Reigns was immunocompromised, he pulled himself away from the show and would go on a five-month hiatus. That five-month hiatus may have been the greatest move in Roman Reigns' professional Facts, career. Facts, bro. There's no denying that. Reigns returned from his absence at SummerSlam yep. 2020 following a match between The Fiend and Braun Strowman and attacked both of them into a pulp. Yep. He returned with a new attitude and buffed up physique, yep. which made him look more dominant. And the some veneers in his mouth. Suggested that he, had he had the, finally the veneer teeth, man. He was, he was, he had went rogue. Oh, it was so, such a glorious moment. He went rogue. Turned heel, and this was proven true when he aligned himself with Paul Heyman. Yep. And he's been untouchable ever since. After SummerSlam, a triple threat match was made between The Fiend, Braun Strowman, and Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship. Reigns didn't sign the contract for the match until the latter stages of the match, came in, scooped up the dub, and the Universal yep. Championship. A championship, mind you, that had been a laughing stock. For most of its lineage, this title was held by part-timers, had pretty bad title runs attached to it, and some horrible booking decisions made as Facts. well. Facts. He crowned himself Universal Champion, and he hasn't looked back since. 
he proclaimed himself as the tribal chief, basically saying that he was the final boss and the reason that WWE employees had food on the table. He was the main event, he was the merchandise, and he was the best in the business. I love the first it. first order of business for the self-proclaimed head of the table was an amazing feud with his cousin Jay Uso. Now I ain't gonna lie to you, this made Jay main event Jay Uso, bro. People knew who Jay was. It wasn't like, which one are you, Jimmy or Jay? No, people knew who he was. Amazing feud amazing yes we knew we knew he wasn't gonna win the title at any point but they it's just the storytelling oh my gosh i wish wwe took this much pride in their storytelling with all their stories if possible because this right here this was solidifying roman reigns as the ultimate final boss and Either you fall in line or you get beat the F up. Oh my God, it was so good. After Uso won a fatal four-way number one contenders match, most of us thought it was a pretty weird way to kick off Reigns' return to the company. But man, were we ever proved wrong. Jey Uso and Roman Reigns told the story of their Samoan heritage and the high standard that Reigns was held in. Reigns said that he had a legacy to uphold and going through Jey Uso was nothing more than that. It wasn't personal, but it was about showing Uso that the family runs because of Roman Reigns. Yep. Over the course of the rivalry, we saw Reigns get more methodical in his mannerisms and his heel turn was in full swing. Everything from the way he spoke to his slow entrance and even some minor changes in his moveset only added mm -hmm. to the depth of his character. He completely transformed his character and added in elements which only made him stronger. At Clash of Champions, it was a straight beatdown of Jey Uso. Destruction when Jey did get of his him. offense in, Roman went to low ball tactics, or literally low blows. Once the beatdown got to uncomfortable levels, Jey's brother came in, threw in the towel to save his brother, and, and that's it. That's how it ended. It was so bad of a beatdown yeah. that someone else had to come end the match. As Reigns stood over Uso, he wanted to be acknowledged as the tribal chief. After a strong match at Clash of Champions, Jey Uso and Roman Reigns would face off inside Hell in a Cell yep. in an I Quit match. Reigns couldn't settle for the fact that he wasn't acknowledged as the head of the table. At Hell in a Cell, the match was very uneasy. Reigns was reluctant to hurt his own blood at first, but after Uso didn't stay down, he got more and more vicious. Yeah, this was great, bro. Near the end of the match, Reigns took the officials out of the match and was standing over Jey, ready to drop steel steps on him. As Jimmy Uso comes down to cradle his brother, Reigns falls to the mat. Uso tells Reigns to remember who is laying on the mat. This was so good. Not going to lie, I, I wasn't expecting it to go into a hell in a cell, but I, it made sense because this is technically a blood feud. And this was good acting. Because it's like Roman was conflicted for just that quick second. And then he... Went back to being rogue. Fucking love this, bro. Matt, and that this was a family member. After that, Rain says, I don't even remember who I am anymore. And he starts to shed a tear. As Jimmy reaches for Reigns to shake hands, Reigns puts him in a guillotine and Jay has to quit, all to save his brother. This match was storytelling at its finest. Great. It's pretty weird to think how Jay Uso was in one of the best matches of 2020. This match had storytelling, physicality, and emotion. Everything sports entertainment should be. Reigns' verbal jabs throughout the match only made the match more mm -hmm. uneasy and I'd say it made it more appealing. His character had completely changed and he was someone not to be messed with. Reigns had finally arrived. Reigns was now the bona fide superstar the company always wanted him to be. After the match, Jey Uso joined forces with Roman Reigns and he single-handedly changed the trajectory of his career. Yep. Reigns is in a position where he elevates everyone he works with, win or loss. Reigns is the focal point of WWE. Everything he does makes you want more. When you leave the consumer wanting more, you're building up your product correctly. For a guy who most of us wanted to shut up a few years ago, now we wait for his every word. Facts. With Kevin Owens, Drew McIntyre, Daniel Bryan, and Edge have only further solidified his amazing Fantastic talent and feuds. abilities. Fantastic the dynamic of heels and baby faces have been thrown away in recent years, but Reigns feels like a true mega heel and possesses mm -hmm. an aura around him which no one else in the company has. Overall, it's a weird arc for Roman Reigns. 
kind of arise and fall and rise again, if you will. Mm -hmm. This guy went from someone who people were clamoring to see succeed. When that success came to him a bit too quick, fans turned their back on him and rightfully so. It would have worked better if it came slowly, but I feel like we can look back at that period in Roman Reigns' career as a time for growth. When people called him out in certain aspects, he improved those. He showed a willingness to adapt. I mean, if your boss tells you to go out there and win, you're not going to tell him no. After the years of hate and negative fan reaction, a break was needed. Once he came back, he gave fans exactly what they wanted to see from him, and that was a rejuvenated character. I love it, man. They wanted to see what Roman Reigns could bring to the table, and this is they so had great. that on full display. He now commands the show on his own. He is that guy. The character transformation has been amazing, and he will go down as the biggest superstar of this generation in WWE, Facts. whether you like it or not. The possibility for mega matches are there too, Ooh. which will only further cement him. The Rock the versus Isles Roman, WWE. fantastic, so the of fantastic Reigns, main event match. I think it's safe looking to forward say to it if it happens. The smoothest ride, but it's been one where we've experienced it with him. I think we can safely say Reigns has swayed a lot of opinion of him into the other direction. His career trajectory is still nuts, considering we're still at the opening stages of what could be an amazing run of dominance and one of the most legendary careers in WWE. This man is the show, this man is WWE today, yep. and this man is the head of the table. E facts, 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 facts. This video is spot on, man. Roman Reigns is what he should have been and what Vince McMahon wanted him to be many years ago. Now he is that guy. Now he is the guy that honestly people are going to want to see people are going to pay money to want to see this guy lose people are going to pay money to want to see this guy win people are going to pay money to see what he has to say SummerSlam, john cena roman reigns i am amped as simple as that i'm amped for the match i cannot wait for the match the match is going to be fantastic I'm willing to bet it's going to be fantastic. I think that's that's worth the mission alone just to see them two go at it. It's going to be great, man. So comment down below. Let me know. Have you guys always been a Roman Reigns fan or have you been kind of a fan at one point when he was in the Shield, then stopped being a fan once they start shoving him down our throats, then start being a fan again? When he came back from leukemia, didn't stop being a fan. Once you start realizing that he shoved, they're shoving him down our throats again. Then became a fan again once he went heel. Let me know if that was your trajectory of being a fan of Roman Reigns. Or have you always just been a fan of Roman since the beginning? Or have you not been a fan of Roman since the beginning? Let me know. I want to get your guys' thoughts and opinions on this. But I appreciate all the love and support. This is a definitely long video. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me, and I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.